Okay, integrated circuit de-encapsulation time. Uh, this is a Dell Semiconductor DS1284. Uh, it's a real-time clock, uh, a watchdog, and a small 50-byte scratch pad RAM. Uh, it was uh, on a board that contained a 6502 processor, uh, to give you some sense of how old this chip is, uh, designed about 30 years ago. Uh, and these were really common uh, devices that were put next to simple microprocessors to start giving some of the utility functions. Uh, of course, today you'd get this all easily into one uh, integrated package, but uh, 30 years ago, uh, you had to build all your peripherals uh, externally. So here's the die photograph looking straight down. There's lots of fun little bits of artwork on this die. Obviously, it must have been a fun company to work at 30 years ago. Uh, first of all, we got the copyright date of 1988, and uh, someone decided to put a very cheerful um, small little guy sitting there with his hands waving. Um, then they have another port where they say precision circuit, so... Um, whether or not it's precision or not, I don't know, but um, kind of amusing. Okay, let's sort down the die. Uh, first, we'll pop up the entire block diagram for the uh, circuit because that's quite helpful. Let's zoom into the block that says 50 bytes of uh, RAM. Now, these were quite special bytes of RAM. They were battery back, so they were persistent. Now, 50 bytes doesn't sound like a lot, but this uh, chip got a lot of use in things like test and measurement equipment because uh, you could store things like calibration tables uh, into it and it would, they'd be persistent for up to about 10 years if I recall for the battery life, uh, and that was of course extremely helpful um, in that era. Uh, going to the actual die photograph, we can see the block, the densest blackest block is almost always the, the uh, RAMs or ROMs, because that, that regular pattern allows them to pack circuitry quite tightly. If we zoom into it a little bit, uh, we can actually see the column decode in the bottom there, uh, and there's exactly 50 column decodes that matches what you would expect in the data, but it didn't come out um, either on the left hand or the right hand side. Uh, perhaps actually it comes into one side and goes out on the other. It depends on the structure of the uh, component. So uh, that was that RAM. Uh, let's zoom back out to the block diagram. Uh, we can see there's, of course, a lot of registers related to keeping time because that was the other major function of this trip. It would keep uh, the uh, time count. So you could uh, power your product off and then wake it up and it would uh, know what time it is. Uh, a lot of the equipment needed to know that. Uh, if we look at the block here in the lower, well, sort of central portion of it, uh, there's a very regular pattern going on, sort of suggesting some like storage element, but they're spread out much more than that RAM was. And I think that's because these are the timekeeping registers, but there's lots of control and steering logic around them, and that's what's spacing them out. Let's see, uh, last major function in this chip is something known as a watchdog, uh, if you're not familiar with what those are. Uh, it's a function outside of the processor core, and it counts down, and uh, if it's not reinitialized in time, what it can be used to do is to generate either a reset to restart the entire program, uh, or sometimes less dramatically, an interrupt to pull the uh, code back into a, a known good state. A very common approach in a real-time design where you absolutely must make sure that the product, um, if it uh, crashes, uh, actually automatically recovers. Uh, zooming out to the chip here, um, the watchdog, of course, will be using some of the registers uh, that are, we just talked about, but then there's also going to be some logic to uh, steer that. Uh, I suspect it's in that sea of gates going on the uh, upper uh, right-hand side of the uh, chip. Uh, where we see sort of the steering logic uh, in the device. What else? Uh, there's, of course, uh, a bunch of analog functions on the chip. There's a, a crystal that's attached to it. It's a 32 kilohertz watch crystal. So we're going to see a Pierce oscillator or something similar, where it's a couple inverters to create the oscillator and then a, a timer dividing chain uh, that I think is hiding out with the left hand side of the chip. Uh, otherwise, a bunch of uh, bond pads, of course, the uh, interface back to the microprocessor. There's an address and data bus. Uh, and then it looks like there's an open drain uh, FET and there's a totem pole FET uh, being used to uh, drive those interrupt pins outwards, uh, which would be expected. Uh, if you want to take a more intense look at this, you can uh, find the photograph on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com. And uh, that was very typical of a chip that in about 30 years ago.